Hi guys, Gypsy Wolf. I hope everybody's having a really great week. It is Thursday, so happy Thursday. It's the day after Ostara. Um, basically the Wiccan, um, the Wiccan Easter. Although I'm not Wiccan, but I do like to kind of celebrate the Wheel of the Year. Anyway, let's get to the video. Enough to chat. So, this video is to show you and give you some ideas for travel altars. Whether you're going on vacation, so you might need a little bit more for that, or something like an Altoids tin works great as a holder for just a couple little items that you might need while you're at work, at school. Um, and you also want to keep in mind what things you may be coming across, what issues or things you're trying to bring to you or get away um, on a daily basis or weekly basis, let's say. Um, and just kind of couple that in with it. So the box that I chose, I found at the dollar store. Is that not super duper cool? It looks like a book. I found that at the dollar store around Halloween time and it is magnetic. I don't know how much I would trust it, you know, without tying it shut. But to give you an idea of size, I grabbed kind of a basic size book. Okay, so it's about half the size. But like I said, you can use smaller things as well. Like again, an Altoids tin works great. Okay, so trying to assemble everything I needed in this little box was not easy. But again, these are just general ideas and I want you guys to make it your own, okay? So, first up on the list, um, bay leaves. I have a couple of those in there. Okay, bay leaves, you can use them for anything. Uh, they're called the wishing leaf, which I'm sure plenty of you have heard of before. So, say you have a desire, all you have to do is take a pen. I grabbed a small pen to put in there. Write down what it is that you need to banish or um, what it is that you need to gain. And you can burn it, send it down a river, creek, whatever. Okay, and then again, you're going to need a pen. That's important. Let me put this aside. Um, okay, so I only was able to fit this small baggie in there, but you never know when you're going to be somewhere in nature or wherever. And, um, you know, you want to grab some of the dirt from that area or an item, a stone. Like for me, I found this stone the other day when I went hiking with a friend of mine. And I just thought the markings on it were super cool. So, of course, I had to grab it and put it in my witchy altar. And then you're going to probably need some type of utensil. Uh, it can be, like, let's say a baby uh, spoon. That would work great. But I don't have a clue where I got this. But it's like a mini uh, shovel. I don't know. So, even if, you know, you just need to break up the dirt, it's sharp. So, that way, if it's cold out and you want the dirt from that area, it'll kind of break it up for you. And then you can put it in your little baggie. Try not to go anywhere without some type of container or pouch that you can put something in. Because you never know where you're going to be. And you never know when you're going to find something that really resonates with you. And you want to bring it home. Okay? So, that's that. Then, all right, um... I think it's important to have a basic anointing oil. Um, you can make your own. I make a lot of my own. It can be something as simple as you know, sandalwood essential oil, frankincense essential oil, or you know, you can mix and match however you want. But personally for me, Van Van oil is kind of my go-to. It's really good for you know cutting and clearing, um, putting things like debt on the run, um, protection, it kind of embodies all the things that you would need. It's just really all about your intention. I had these little jars and I put some in there. Then, okay, you never know when you're going to need to bind a bitch, right? <laughs> so, I did not have any black thread left so I just grabbed the white because it's good for all purpose binding because you could just be binding a situation and you don't want to use black so this is I don't know what type of thread this is called but it's a little thicker than normal thread I had it threw it in there it'll be useful at some point I'm sure okay then 
The next up, and we all know these are important, candles. Okay, let me open this bad boy up. I love obtaining as many different colored candles as I can find that are birthday size because you can use them for so many different things and they burn quickly. So if you need a spell on the fly or you're wanting, you know, you've got five minutes before work but you need to work the spell real quick, birthday candle. Okay, so I have two of every color. I have yellow, green, pink, white. Now, I couldn't really find plain old red. So this one, it kind of, you know, it's like candy cane striped. But it, it does the job. Blue, and I actually put three black in there because I tend to use black candles uh, more frequently than any other color because they're good for banishing, protection, um, and also not so nice spells too. So you never know when those <laughs> when that needs to be done. And then of course I did also throw in a little tea light candle. Um, just in case I don't, for whatever reason, I don't have something to fix the little birthday candles too. And also tea light candles are really good if you want to melt it down a little bit and place some herbs in there, let it reset, and then you made your own magical candle. That's super cool. And it's also a great idea for your travel altar. Next, I have, I grabbed this little, it's a candle holder. It's a little dish that I can, you know, maybe place, you know, you burn the bottom of the candle and you place it in the center and maybe, you know, put some herbs or crystals around it, you know. Um, and then I also, I took out the wax and the wick from a tea light along with, this came in one of my incense cone packages, but you could you know obviously use aluminum foil if you don't have something like this but this is great again for the candles or for incense cones incense sticks are just too long for me to fit in here so because I didn't have much room but I wanted more than one type of incense in my little witchy container I took a pencil and you probably can't see it, but I inscribed the beginning letter of the incense name. So this has a J on it for Jasmine. Jasmine's great for love. And then what is this one? This red one. I can't see, but I will figure this one out. I believe this one is sandalwood. And last but not least, I know I have dragon's blood. I think this one's Dragon's Blood. I think so. <laughs> I'll have to go back and check. Oh, and by the way, because I couldn't find any purple birthday candles, the smallest purple candle I could find was one of these. It's actually a Hanukkah candle. I found a whole box of them on clearance at a Walgreens, like, I don't know, last year, right after Hanukkah. Like, I'm talking, like, 50 candles for three bucks and all different, can like, colors. Purple, blue pink uh, or red. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. You'll have to forgive me. I'm not super familiar with um, Hanukkah celebrations. Uh, yellow, orange. Uh, so it fit in there. So that's what's important. And I like to always sea salt. Always carry sea salt with you. Okay. Like you never know. There might be a ghost and you need to <laughs> do a ring of protection like in Supernatural. <laughs> and then also, sea salt is a good representation of um, the either earth or water element. I've kind of intertwined the two. I find it useful either way. So, okay, so we have one element here. Then for wind, even though we do have incense, say we can't burn them at the time, but we need all four elements. 
And I have this blue jay feather that I found in my yard. I have a huge holly tree and they love holly trees and they're always in there tripping away. And for the water element, I know it says rainwater on here, but this is actually full moon water. So if you're new to the craft and you don't have all these anointing oils or any oils, unless maybe olive oil, which you can use as a basic anointing oil, um, or maybe you don't even like working with oils, I don't know. You can always use rainwater, or excuse me, it is rainwater technically, but I charged it under the full moon. And this one in particular, I charged last night, it was not only a Stara, the spring equinox, but it was also a full moon, so it was a pretty amazing, powerful day. So I wanted to take advantage of those energies and power. So also, you can put a drop of it, say you need some of those lunar energies for whatever reason in your day. You can put a drop of this in your morning coffee or, you know, your regular drinking water or whatever. Or you have a plant that's not doing so well, whether you're at home or you have plants, you know, at your work on your desk. You know, give it a few drops along with its regular water and it should like it. Um, there are just, oh gosh, the possibilities are endless with moon water, but I'll save that for another video. So I don't keep rambling. I'm good at that. Okay, now I have this wrapped in cellophane only because um, I'm not sure. I, I'm pretty sure that this is not just a sage smudge stick. I don't know what this other herb is. This was given to me by a friend. Oh, okay. This was given to me by a friend. Um, we kind of swap different witchy items, you know, from time to time. And she mailed it to me. So... I want to say it might be sweet grass. I don't know, but it falls off and it gets all over everything else in the box. So I, I wrapped it up. But there is white sage on the one side. So you never know when you need some energy clearing, right? Or say, you know, you go over to a friend's house that they just bought or apartment and they're telling you that they have, you know, ghost issues or something like that. Hey, no problem. I've got my sage stick. And then you look really awesome. <laughs> um okay i also have this is a mini altoids tin like one of the really itty bitty ones and inside i put i don't know if you can see that there a bunch of pins now a lot of them have a clear head but that's for a reason you can use different colored markers to color um, the top of it, whatever color correspondence you need. Also, I use these um, to prick my finger instead of a lancet. Now, I really wouldn't recommend that, but that's what I do because I'm not going to go spend 20 bucks on a box of those things. So, um, if you don't have any rubbing alcohol, you can just put, you know, the metal point into a fire's flame. Let it cool down. Trust me, let it cool down first. And then you can prick your finger. And then I also have, you know, the basic sewing pins as well. I have one with each different color head. I have black, red, pink, green, you name it. But they can be used, you know, to, yes, draw blood, but also if, you know, you're um, working some type of magic where you're trying to keep something in place, it can be very useful. Then... I mean, come on, no travel altar is complete without matches. You need fire, okay? You're going to need it. You can use a lighter. That's totally fine, but I just prefer my mini box of matches. And then when you're done with these boxes, you can use them as like little spell boxes too, which I think is really neat. Uh, this is the smallest notebook I could find. It's not cute. Kind of bugged me that it's not pretty. <laughs> But at least it's blue, which is my favorite color. So this way, if you need to write a petition, that's why I don't have any little petition papers in here. You just tear out a piece of paper, use that. And also, if something happens to you that day that you want to document, um, you know, maybe you had an encounter with an animal that was really unique, really strange, or you had some type of psychic vision and you want to make sure you don't forget and you want to document it, you have it right here. That's why... We have a pen. 
Okay, and then lastly, I already took these out. I like to keep some herbs and gemstones. Okay, I could only fit so many. It is what it is. So I have a stick of cinnamon. Cinnamon's good for protection, money, love, like sweetening love. Star anise, again, pretty much the same properties as cinnamon. And I have a couple cloves. I'm not even really going to bother trying to pick all these up. But I have a couple of cloves. Again, similar properties, but I generally associate them with protection because they kind of look like little nails to me. Like, you know, driving a nail into something. Um, it can also be used in a spell like when you're... Uh, think about a spell as you're building a tower. Okay, and each nail helps you erect that tower. So, clothes can be used in that way, too. Then, I have a little seashell. Another way, if I don't want to break out the moon water. Another way to incorporate the element of water. Rose quartz, which is great for any... Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. I'm clumsy. I have a little rose quartz, which is great for any type of love working. Tiger's eye. I love to keep a tiger's eye with me. It's great for protection, uh, mostly courage, and just that vitality. Some days, if you're having a rough day and you are tired, and you just need that extra oomph to get through your day and maybe get through that presentation and coffee, just in not doing the trick, this would really help, okay? But keep your crystals cleansed. That's important, too. Then in this little baggie, I have two different stones. I don't know if you can tell. But on the bottom, I have a stone called hematite, which is my automatic go-to for protection. So say you're going into a building and you just feel like you feel this really heavy, bad energy and you want to protect yourself, hold on to a hematite, put it in your pocket. If you're a female, put it in your bra, whatever. And then on the top, we have some clear quartz, which clearly can be charged with pretty much any type of energy. So it's, if you put only one stone in your travel altar, try to make it a clear quartz because you can really do just about anything with that, okay? And then yeah, I have this cool little drawstring bag to put the little loose herbs and stones in. All right guys, I know I rambled quite a bit. Oh, real quick before I go, if you can fit it into your box, which I was not able to, a mirror is a great idea, one that has not seen your reflection, preferably, but I believe that you can cleanse the mirror, so I'm not really weird about that. You can get little crafting mirrors at the um, at the craft store, you know, you buy a pack of them. Um, I do have those somewhere, but I have this cool little, look at this little sexy cowgirl, gotta love it. Okay, and it's dual-sided. This would be great for reflection magic. So, if you can fit a compact into here, you can find them at the dollar store. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure that's where I found this one. Um, I would really recommend putting one in there. Say somebody is really, like, a bully at school or, you know, a bully at work. Anyone. Anyone who's giving you a really tough time. You print out their picture, open it up, slap it in there with your intention, boom. Just close it on up. That way, any of the negativity, the bullying, the crap that they're sending your way, send it right back. Like, say, no, thank you. I don't want your shit today. So you can have it. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm approaching 20 minutes, and I want to stop before I do. But, okay. Anyway, if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. Have a great Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I hope to see you on Monday. I have an idea of a video I'm going to shoot. And as always, mwah, blessed be.